The Seahawks have started phase two of their off-season workouts, Brock. They're really starting to get into what we're going to start to see over the course of the summer heading into training camp. The three storylines that you're mm -hmm. looking for most, because we're not going to be able to see them, all the fine points of what they're doing, but we're going to start to see trends and what ideas are they going to start to incorporate into the schemes this year. Yeah, it was interesting as we did this on the air today. I kind of went editorial or, or fluffy. Yeah, you and, went big and, picture. And you went all hardcore details, mm -hmm. X's and O's in football. I mean, for me, I'm so intrigued to see the franchise quarterback continue to grow into that role. We have one. We have a homegrown franchise quarterback and what that looks like from a leadership perspective. I can't wait to see these young guys. I mean, we just, I think it's very easy because of where the roster is and how set it is, Danny, to say and brush them aside, oh, maybe they have a role, maybe they don't. They took some risks with all these guys. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. And I think most of all for me, number one, is this group played with a chip on their shoulder. And not a small chip, a sizable chip on their shoulder. This coach has had to live with expectations. He did it for a decade at USC. I'm not at all worried about it. I'm just curious now that they are the most respected team, now that they do have the number one roster for a group that had all that swagger largely built on the chip on their shoulder, what does that now look like as they're really the team that everyone's going to be gunning for? It is. It's an interesting idea. Richard Sherman last year when I was doing a piece on how the team was put together, he talked about them as a band of misfits. Yep. Well, they're not a band of misfits anymore. They're going to go in as one of the favorites this year. For me, though, it's really more X's and O's that I'm looking at. Who comes out of that four guard pairing to the two starting spots. You have Paul McQuiston, John Moffitt, James Carpenter, J.R. Sweezy. Those are four guys with two starting spots. Who emerges there? But then the most compelling thing for me is Bruce Irvin. If they are going to try him at strong side linebacker, which there's a very strong indication they are going to at least experiment with that, is that a spot where they find a home for him? He's a first round pick who was drafted to rush the passer. And now you're going to put him in a spot where he's not just going to rush the passer. You're going to ask him to drop. You're going to ask him to do different things. Does that suit his skill set? Is that the best way to use him? It's a fascinating question. These young guys, they fly in a week from today. They'll have their rookie mini camp a week from tomorrow. The journey begins. The mini camps follow. We'll be out there covering it all, as I know you will be excited to watch. Watch too.